hours ago. So we're going to want to make sure that as we progress into the next 48 hours that we are very, very cognizant of this storm moving in. And that's why we've got Dr. Ariel Cohen joining us now, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service here in Los Angeles. Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Cohen. Thanks so much for having me. So let's get right. Very <laughs> so let's get right into it. So Southern California has seen some very heavy rain recently, just 24 hours ago, but San Diego flooded last week. We saw Long Beach seeing a lot of flooding yesterday. And now with this even heavier rain expected to push in, what potentially makes this system worse on this saturated ground? It's going to take a whole lot less to get a whole lot more flooding. What we saw in the Long Beach area with significant flooding just the other day, uh, many feet of water pooling over the low-lying areas, cars getting stuck. We're expecting that to be over a much broader area. Now, not only are the roadways going to be flooded, but we're looking at significant landslides, mudslides, other debris flows, bringing threatening conditions, life-threatening conditions through passes and canyons as, uh, you know, for people in the mountainous areas. This is a very serious situation. We're talking about life-threatening conditions. While there's some uncertainty in how uh, significant this will end up being, there's a reasonable worst case scenario that we're encouraging everyone to prepare for, kind of along the lines of the images that you're seeing here and maybe even worse. I completely agree because there is a balance between crying wolf and playing it safe when it comes to forecasting, but it is best always to err on the side of the worst case scenario. So that way you're prepared for whatever may come. A little insight into that? Absolutely. It takes time to be prepared. It takes time to make alternative arrangements, travel arrangements, to avoid areas that are you know, more susceptible to the flooding. You know, if you have cars that are parked in low-lying areas, those are going to be first to flood. So you might want to take cars and other vehicles and bring those to higher ground. Be listening for evacuation orders from emergency managers as well as law enforcement. It takes time to be prepared to change your plans, get sandbagging out. So, you know, if we're waiting until the last moment when our confidence is the highest, you're probably waiting too long because if things end up being worse, you're not going to be ready. So let's all hope for the best. There's a possibility things could end up on the drier side. This is not a very high confidence situation. That being said, there's a reasonable worst case scenario where we're looking at very significant life threatening impacts across the area. And as you mentioned, Ariel, it's back to back storms. We just had one yesterday, so we're not getting much breathing room before our next storm system is moving in. So since the ground's already saturated, this next storm could potentially be very dangerous in terms of flooding, as you just mentioned. Now, the need to be prepared because our area is so prone to these debris flows, landslides, street flooding, just to name a few. What can people do to get ahead and be prepared for this next round of rain? First and foremost, remember, never drive through a flooded roadway. It might seem like a convenient option, but it could easily kill you. Don't ever drive through flooded roadways. Turn around, don't drown. If you have travel plans, consider changing them ahead of time. Putting travel off until when a, when a drier period comes through. And, and, and just remember that that very short opportunity to make that decision could be a life and death decision. And, you know, ahead of time, be putting out sandbags if you're in a flood prone area or other protective barriers to prevent the water from entering your homes and business. But ultimately, there is a potential for a lot of damage to come with the flooding. Avoid canyons and passes and other areas where we could have very easy uh, landslides coming down, uh, creating, you know, potentially dangerous conditions over over the higher terrain. And also I wanna mention, we're gonna have dangerous conditions at the beaches. This is not a time to be at the beaches. Rip currents will be potentially deadly. Coastal flooding with splash over from very large waves is gonna be affecting the local area. So at this point, it's best to be having a quick route to higher ground if flood, water, flood waters are, are, are coming up. If you're in an area that's prone to flooding, be listening for those evacuation orders and even prepare a supply kit, multiple days of medications, clothing, food, water, so that you're ready with the impacts of a very dangerous storm system. Again, let's hope for the best. It's possible things could end up on the drier side. Weather is not a, 
a, a perfect science, so to speak. However, what we know is that the possibility exists for a very dangerous outcome. And if you're taking those steps to be prepared, you're much less likely to be caught off guard. Those are all great things to remember moving into it. And we have luckily some dry weather both today, tonight and tomorrow where we have the ability to make these preparations, put them in place before the storm, storm arrives overnight Saturday into Sunday. So let's talk about the storm a little bit. Break down that location of the low because it always comes down to location, location, location. And the lows placement is so important. So how can it mean the difference of just mere inches of where it will fall in certain areas? for a direct hit to our area and even 40 miles making that big of a difference north or south into how much rain we can get. Think about a 50 mile wide fire hose that could set up somewhere in Southern California. Outside of that fire hose, there's not gonna be a whole lot. Where that fire hose sets up, it's going to be under the gun for significant amounts of flooding. Now, where that sets up, could be Ventura County, could be LA County, could straddle the border, Santa Barbara County. And ultimately, we can't say right now exactly where it's going to be. You might see some of the future cast and other model depictions showing in one area, but small changes to the actual location of that could be the difference between deadly flooding and just more of a nuisance, minor flooding situation. Point, main point we want to communicate is that no matter where that sets up, if you're prepared ahead of time, you're much less likely to get caught off guard. And everyone is going to be susceptible or has that potential to experience those very dangerous flooding conditions. And even two, three, four inches of rain on top of what we already have is going to leave areas very vulnerable. And the good news is that we know where those trouble spots are. You know where those low-lying areas are, and those are going to get hit with this regardless. It's just a matter of how much. Now, this storm is warm, as I mentioned, to begin with. So there's a lot of not only subtropical moisture, but actual tropical moisture that we're tapping into, which will only increase the ability for this storm to produce more precipitation and tap into that. So what is that going to mean for potential rainfall totals for our area? We're looking at three to six inches of total rain accumulations at the lower elevations. Now, with rainfall on the lower end of that side, could end up with more minor flooding. However, with the possibility of six inches in lower elevations, including across the LA metro area, that's a very serious flooding situation. We're talking about a particularly dangerous situation potentially evolving. Over the higher terrain, we're talking about upwards of six inches of rain, maybe even locally a foot of rain in some areas. And the highest elevations over six to 7,000 feet, feet of snow accumulating. Now, when we're talking about those higher elevations, they're going to be very prone to landslides, mudslides, debris flows. And as we know across Southern California, it doesn't take a whole lot of rain in order to get those conditions going. So avoid travel through the mountains if at all possible. And that's where we were going to veer to next. It's going to be a really big event for our mountains, no matter where that low sets up shop. So six to eight thousand, six to seven thousand feet is where we're going to start. But then behind the system, we're actually going to see those elevations drop down to three or four, very similar to yesterday's. Correct? Exactly. As colder air behind the main axis of precipitation overspreads the area, snow levels will fall. And while the precipitation will be as heavy at that point, we will see the snow levels gradually decline to somewhat lower elevations, still staying above the highest population density for the most part. But areas, for instance, around the grapevine and other areas over the mountains will get increasing potential for snow as we head into late uh, middle parts of next week. Especially the southern side, the south facing side of the mountains, they tend to be a little bit more prone to those landslides and those mudslides. And we haven't really talked about wind. Wind is also going to be a huge problem for both the higher elevations, especially, but also for us as well. Exactly. We have a tremendous amount of atmospheric flow moving through around that low pressure system, as you had mentioned earlier. And that's going to be bringing wind gusts of 55 to 65 miles an hour, even locally stronger over the higher terrain. The core of the greatest wind threat is going to be through San Luis Obispo County, Central Coast area, Santa Barbara County, but could still see some of those strong wind gusts affecting the San Gabriel Mountains and elsewhere across the mountains in LA County, Ventura County, that could bring down trees, power lines, and create some wind damage as well. 
And as a climatologist, I've been looking a lot at the ocean temperatures here over the last few weeks. And the water off the coast of Southern California is two and a half degrees warmer than last year at this time. Thanks to El Nino, but also thanks to climate change. So I can definitely see that correlation between these changes and the intensification of these storms that are plowing into California. How do you see climate change playing a role in not only the storm that's moving in this weekend, but the rest of our winter and spring season? Well, there's a lot to learn. Any given weather event, such as this one here, is on a very different scale of energy than compared to when we're talking about global climate change. So we can't direct a causational, a, a cause and effect relationship between one event and global climate change. Now, that being said, the potential does exist for increased favorability, but there are a lot of question marks, a lot of unknowns. The main point is that these events, we saw them last year, we saw high impact events earlier, uh, a couple decades ago, 2005, six, in the 1980s, major events. The events are happening now, they could happen in the future, and Californians need to be ready for the worst case scenario. And we all went through it last year, like you said, so we really know. And for every degree of warming, there's a 4% increase in moisture. So we are dealing with a atmosphere that's very primed and ready with a lot of moisture for various different reasons. And that is another reason everyone needs to be not only cognizant this weekend, but moving forward into the entire season. And all of those things that you told folks to do to be prepared, all of those things are going to be great knowledge in our back pocket as we move forward over the next few months. Absolutely. You know, the few additional steps to be prepared is a life and death decision. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Cohen, and stay safe this weekend. Stay safe, everyone.